This is Algebra 2, Unit 11, Lesson 1, on rotations and angle terminology. So in this unit, we will be studying the three basic trig functions, trigonometric functions. These functions are based on the geometry of a circle and rotations around its center. So sometimes they are known as circular functions because they um, rotate around the center of a circle. So in this introductory lesson, we will introduce some basic terminology and concepts concerning angles, some of the terminology specified below. Okay, so let's start about angles in standard position. Standard position. An angle is said to be drawn in standard position if its vertex is at its, the origin and its initial ray points along the positive x-axis. Okay, so this has got a couple things in it. So the angle, if we place it on the axis, you can see right here, here is my angle. Okay, it says the vertex is at the origin. So the vertex of the angle is right here. And its initial ray, the initial ray means the starting ray, the one side of the angle, is on the x-axis. And the other end of the ray is called the terminal ray. So this is actually an angle that's created going like this. So that is our angle. Okay, now notice when I went this way, um, I am actually rotating this initial ray over to the terminal ray over here. Now, it says positive and negative rotations. Now, there's two different ways that you can make an angle. You can make a positive angle or you can make a negative angle. And a rotation is said to be positive if the initial ray is located counterclockwise. So when you rotate this way, you are doing a positive angle. So um, when you go, here's your initial ray, you are rotating to the terminal ray here, you are creating an angle that is in the positive direction. So if you are rotating counterclockwise to the terminal ray, it is positive. If you're rotating clockwise, you are doing a negative angle. So a negative angle would be rotating the initial ray clockwise to end up at the terminal ray. So this would be a negative angle. So positive is counterclockwise, negative is clockwise. Okay, now notice the quadrants here. The quadrants are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4. They go counterclockwise. Think of that. That's the way you go with the positive angles as well. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of examples of positive and negative rotations. All right, for each of the following angles given by the Greek letter theta, theta is the angle that's usually used in trigon trigonometry. It is, looks like a circle with a line through it, or a zero with a line through it. That is the Greek letter theta. It's used for angles. So we're going to draw a rotation diagram and identify the quadrant the terminal ray falls in. Okay, so if I'm going to do a rotation diagram and draw my angle, first of all, um, theta is 145 degrees. We always start from the first quadrant over here. So we know that each quadrant is going to increase by 90 degrees. So this one would be 90 degrees, this would be 180, 270, and this would be zero, and then back to 360, all the way around. Okay, so 145 degrees, our basic part of our angle would be like this. There's the initial ray, there's the zero, and then 145 degrees, well, it's between 90 and 180, so it'd be somewhere over here. So the 145 degrees is actually measured like this. That would be 145 degrees. Okay, 320 degrees, where would that be? Well, if I draw my axis in, all right, my terminal part of my, or initial part of my ray, excuse me, will be here on the x-axis. And then 320 degrees, well, we have 90, 180, 270. It's got to be the terminal part of the ray will be over here. So it actually goes around positive direction 320 degrees that way. So theta 320 degrees would be a circular function that goes like that. All right, how about 72 degrees? All right, here's my axis. All right, so my zero degree, my initial side of my angle would be right here. Here's my initial side of my angle. And then 72 degrees. Well, remember, this is 90 degrees, so 72 would be somewhere kind of like that. So this is a rotation of 72 degrees around the origin would be right there. That would be 72 degrees. Okay. All right, theta is equal to negative 210 degrees. All right, so first of all, when I draw my axis here, I'm still going to start from uh, zero, but instead of going counterclockwise, I'm going to go clockwise. 
So this is zero. This would be negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and then back to negative 360. So if I'm going negative 210 degrees, I would go starting from my initial side of my angle would be here. And then I would go rotate it. 210 would be back up through here. Okay, so this would actually work out to look like that, negative 210 degrees. All right, so let's look at the quadrants also when we do this. This one, the initial side was always at zero. The terminal side is going to be at quadrant two. For theta equals 320, what quadrant did this end up in? This ended up in quadrant four. For theta equals 72, this is in quadrant one. And theta equals negative 210, we end up in quadrant two. Okay, now notice when we do this, the quadrant that you end up with is where the terminal side of the angle ends up. Okay, let's try a couple more. Theta equals 250. All right, so if I draw this, theta is gonna be my starting angle. It starts in at zero right here on the x-axis. And 250, where's that going to end up? It's actually gonna end up in quadrant three. 90, 180, 250 would be down here. So your angle is actually measured like this. That would be 250 degrees, and that would be quadrant three. Okay, theta equals negative 310. So which way am I going to rotate for this one? Well, I'm gonna rotate clockwise for this one. So I'm going to be going in this direction. So my initial side of my angle is here, and then 310 degrees, this would be 90, 180, 270, 310 would be up here somewhere. So it goes around like this in a, in a clockwise direction, so that's negative 310, so I end up in quadrant one. So that's negative 310 degrees. Okay, now what about 460? Well, remember, one complete revolution is how many degrees? Well, it would be 360 degrees. So I have to go 360 degrees and then pass that and keep going. So let's think about this for a second. I've got, here's my initial side, and my angle's gonna go around like this. So when I get to here, I'm at 360 degrees. How many more degrees do I have to go? I have to go another 100 degrees. So I'm gonna end up over here somewhere in quadrant two, my terminal side of my angle is actually going to be over here. So notice because I made one complete revolution, I just kind of made the spiral there to show that it's actually 360 degrees. So that actually end up in quadrant two. All right, let's do the last one here. Theta is equal to negative 400. So I'm gonna draw my axis. My initial side is gonna be at zero again. Now, which way am I gonna go for this one? I am gonna go, because it's negative, I'm gonna go in a clockwise direction. All right, so if I start from here, if I go all the way around, I'm 360 degrees right there. Now, how much more do I have to go? I have to go another 40 degrees. So I'm gonna put that somewhere around here. So that's gonna actually end up in quadrant four. So there we go. So when we do the angles, we have to know what way to rotate, positive or negative, and what quadrant we end up with when we do these. So in which quadrant would the terminal ray of an angle drawn in standard position fall if the angle measures 860 degrees? Well, let's do ourselves a sketch here and see what we can figure out. So here is my sketch. Now, since it's a positive angle, I'm going to go counterclockwise, starting from here at zero, and I'm gonna go counterclockwise. So. 860 degrees, well, one revolution is 360 degrees. A second revolution would be 720 degrees. So there's 720. So I still have to go 860, so 860 minus 720 is 140 degrees. So if I have to go another 140 degrees, there's 90, and there's 140 would be over here. 
So your terminal side of your angle would end up over here. So that would be in quadrant two. Okay. All right, now going along with uh, positive and negative angles, we also have what's called coterminal angles. Notice that's supposed to be a GLES, but anyway. Coterminal means having the same terminal side, ray. So any two angles drawn in standard position that share a terminal ray. So when you draw your angle in standard position, here is your initial, here's your terminal ray. There are actually two angles that make up that. We have the positive angle that goes like this. It makes the terminal, uh, ends up here, whatever that measurement is. But we also have the negative angle that comes around in a clockwise direction and meets up here. So when you draw the terminal ray, you actually create a positive and a negative angle that um, have the same terminal ray. Now, what should those two angles add up to be? Well, they should have to be 360 because going this way plus this way is a complete revolution. All right, let's try a couple of those. All right, so give a negative angle that is coterminal with each of the following positive al angles, alpha. So if we are given alpha of 90 degrees, so here's my axis, a 90 degree angle would go from here to there. So it would be coterminal with this angle going this way, this would be at negative 270. So this is 90, that would be negative 270. All right, let's try 330. 330, uh, 330 degrees would go around like this. There's 270, 330 would go this way. So that's 330 degrees. So how many degrees do I have left? Going this way, this would be negative 30. So that adds up to 360. Okay. All right, theta equals 120, or alpha equals 120, sorry. 120, the angle would go over here. This would be 120 over this way, 120 degrees positive. If you go counterclockwise, or clockwise, excuse me, you would have to go 240 degrees to the coterminal. Negative 240 degrees, sorry about that. And for alpha equals 210, so 180 degrees, you would go around positive, here's 180, and then down to here to 210. So there's the terminal side, is 180 degrees. So if I wanted to go this way, it would be negative 180 degrees for a total of 360 degrees. So coterminal angles drawn in standard position will always have measures that differ by an integer multiple of 360 degrees. All right, the last angle I want to talk about is a reference angle. The reference angle is the positive acute angle formed by the terminal ray and the x-axis. So if you look at your x-axis right here, um, when you draw an angle in standard position, you will always draw a reference angle that goes from the x-axis to that. So the reference angle is actually from here. It's that angle right here. It's always measured from the x-axis. Those are used a lot in calculation with trigonometric functions that we're going to look at later in the unit. Okay, so let's try a couple. All right, let's draw, first of all, the uh, following angles and then draw a rotation diagram and the state the beta's reference angle. So we want to look at the reference angle with an 160 degree angle. So our 160 degree angle would measure from here, 160 degrees would be somewhere over here in the second quadrant, that would be 160 degrees. So our reference angle would be this angle right here. Now it's measured to the 180, so this would have to be 20 degrees would be your reference angle. Okay, for beta equals 300, here's my uh, diagram, a 300 degree angle, it would go around like this, 270, 300 would be somewhere over here, going around like this. Now remember, if this is 300 measured to uh, the x-axis, we want the positive angle from here. So how far is it from there to there? That would be 30 degrees, or 60 degrees, excuse me, not 30. 60 degrees. I was thinking 330. Okay, now notice it's a positive acute angle. We're not looking for the road to way it rotates, we're just looking to measure the angle. All right, beta equals 210. If we have a 210 degree angle, its reference angle would be what? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. 
All right, so if this is 210, the reference angle is actually from the x-axis, so the beta reference angle is actually going to be 30 degrees. All right, let's